Hey there, and welcome to the Confident Woman Podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Brooks. Join me as I sit down with co-hosts, friends, and carefully curated guests as we talk about all the things that empower you to become your best and most confident self so you can step boldly into who you were created to be, the confident woman. Let's go. Okay, today we have with us a very special guest. We have with us Lauren Macedonsky. Lauren is a certified life coach and podcast host of Cheeky Vibe and Peaceful Life Podcast. So welcome, Lauren. Hi, thank you for having me. Yeah, super excited to dive into all the goods. I know that we were just chatting a little bit before the episode started, and we have so much to talk about. I know that we um, usually kind of dive in and just kind of lead into an intro, um, but I'd love for you to tell our listeners a little bit more about you. Okay. So my story kind of started, um, first I started in fitness and nutrition coaching, and then I took a pivot after I went through my own personal development, self-discovery journey, whatever you want to call it. But after, um, my divorce, I just really dove into so many different pieces of it. Like, who was I, what did I really want? What did I want my life to look like? What did I want my relationships to look like? Why maybe was I picking partners in my past that just were not healthy? And I really just went through this journey of self-discovery and I kind of um, was putting these pieces back together. And I was like, I was proud of who I was becoming, but I also wanted to, you know, link arms with women. So they did not feel like they were alone on their journey of self-discovery. So that was kind of where I started into that pivoting into life coaching and just discovering who I was and who like not, um, I I always say I'm a recovering people pleaser. There's women out there that can relate. I know it. So yeah, you're talking to one here. (laughs) Yeah. So I just wanted to show up fully as me and for once be okay, not being for everyone. Cause I think when we start, um, an online business or we're putting ourselves out there, we start by kind of worrying about that. Like, you know, is this person going to like me? And then, you know, with the followers, all these things, it's no, I just wanted to show up and serve the women that wanted to be on this journey with me. Yeah. Wow. That's incredible. I mean, everything that you're just talking about, I'm over here literally nodding because I can agree to everything that you just said. I have lived what you just said. And it, and it's, and it's so fascinating when you stop worrying about what other people think or having those opinions of others and just really fully embracing you. Because when you get out of your way, you come from that place of service. And knowing that your heart and your intention is there, that becomes this the motivating factor and not worrying about what, what if they like me or don't like me? What if they don't accept me? And it's like, it's almost like that noise just like mutes itself in that sense, right? I mean, I think yeah. you probably relate. Yeah. So I'm curious to know, like how, you know, how you got started on that journey of personal growth and self-discovery, like what, what prompted you that said, you know what, this, I need to take action. I want to change, you know, was it an area of your life or was it the entirety of your life? Like kind of walk us through that process. I'm curious to know. Oh, goodness. Well, when I was going through it all and it was hard, it was kind of like personal development was something I'd already kind of learned about and podcasting. I love to listen to podcasts. So when I was having a hard day going through my divorce, I would just kind of put my earbuds in. I was like, okay, like pulling myself out of it when you felt like that back against the wall moment, like tears and all. And it was like, okay, these were those little nuggets I was starting to hear that I was like, no, this is within me too. And pulling myself out of it. But then I also had my daughters that even though they were little, they, that was like, what I kept thinking about is them and the role model one that I wanted to be, because I wanted them to see a healthy relationship and how like I was being treated, the love I was having, the partnership. I want them to see all those things, but also knowing just as a woman, like I wanted them to see a more confident version of me. Mm. Yes. You know, we hear this from so many women is that we want to we want to be the examples not only for our our children or um, you know the younger generation, but it it all starts with you, right? And so you you know really hitting the nail on the head there is that wh- how are we showing up? It's like if we put out there this expectation that this is how life should look, 
but we have to take it, take account and responsibility for ourselves and say, well, how am I showing up in those areas? How am I showing up for this life that I want? And you recognizing that and knowing that your, your young daughters are watching you and being that role model. So that's, you know, it, it, it's so cool when we can look at it from that perspective and realizing that, yes, I personally want this change, but yet it's not just for me because you don't realize the trajectory and the lives that are going to be touched by you making those, those, whether they're minute or monumental changes, they're always being watched by somebody. And especially if it's giving back to our, to our younger, you know, versions of ourselves or our children, that becomes that legacy that you're leaving behind. And, you know, I think for anyone listening who is like, well, you know, what if I want this change, but I don't know what this change is, who is somebody that you have, uh, you know, admired or looked up to in your life that you can say, well, that would be an ideal version of me that resonates with me. And that's kind of the version that, that I could see myself potentially becoming. And again, this is what you're doing. And so this is just incredible. So thank you. Yeah. It's really cool to watch my girls step into that. Cause I kind of think about it. It's like, I am showing up in this stronger, more confident version of me. And now they're getting to watch that to where if they were watching the past version of me, it just, I don't know. It's so cool to see the transition. Cause I heard someone um, say one time, like, we can't tell our kids to go after their dreams if we're not willing to do it too. Yeah. So I really want to show them it's okay to like do things things. One, I always have to tell my, my daughter, my oldest has a hard time not being good at something right away. So it's okay to not be good at it and to learn and to do things afraid. So those are some of the lessons that I'm showing you them like, Hey, mommy's mommy's doing this, or let's do this together. How are you doing this and trying something new? Yeah, that's incredible. It's like when you look back at, I always say like, I have this former version of myself. So when you look back at your <laughs> former version, how, how does that feel internally when you could say, wow, like this is who I was, but mm-hmm. this is who I am and get ready for the woman I'm becoming. Like, yeah, how that. cool is that? So tell, tell us some of the, uh, the biggest like life-changing attributes that are coming into this present version of you that you would say, this isn't, I never, I never imagined this in my life. Like what was a former version into your present version? Some of the biggest things that you're most proud of or, or things that you are, are so grateful for, for the lessons or the things that you had to let go. Oh, I'm definitely so grateful for my relationship now with my fiance and like we're planning a wedding and I'm, I'm really grateful for that because I didn't know like what I was, uh, worthy of in love. Like, I think I just always kind of settled. Um, and honestly, like I tell tell a lot of people this, if I would, if he would have been one of my first dates after being divorced, I don't know that I would have felt good enough. And I know that sounds really sad, but it's so true. Like, I feel like he just checks all the boxes, but we both did so much work on ourselves that was what was key. We both learned to love ourselves after our divorce and that, and we just have like a beautiful relationship of, you know, communication and really coming together and working on all the pieces. Cause it's not perfect. Right. It's, but we're working on that together. Um, so my relationship, but also being willing to put myself in uncomfortable situations, because there is so many things that I would have said no to in the past. And now I'm like, okay, this feels really scary, but let's go. (laughs) Yeah. And I imagine having such a supportive partner in your life has really just, you know, some, it's like, you can be your own cheerleader, but having that support, that belief, that encouragement, that, that, you know, we, we, as humans, we need that. Right. So it could be like, oh, I don't, you know, need this validation or acceptance, but yet it feels good. And then we could say, yeah, but actually we do need it because it, it is necessary. You can only you know, cheer yourself on for so far and having a partner that's supportive, that's willing to do the work and, and, you know, go through the, the growing process with you, because I think that's also so important when in any relationship, whether it's a friendship, romantic, uh, platonic, whatever that is, if you're on, on this path of, of growth, but yet your other half isn't growing with you, you see this disconnect and and this divide happens where it could break relationships. And it doesn't necessarily mean that it's a a bad thing or even a good thing because some relationships are there to teach us things, right? So I'd love to learn 
more about what were some of the lessons that came from your um, your previous relationship that now were so eye opening that brought you brought in now that you have a new level of value and worth into this relationship and how much it just really it, it's such a profound relationship that that makes you just live with passion and purpose. Oh goodness, my past definitely um, communication. I think I had so much fear of speaking my truth that I was like, didn't didn't say things because I'm like, oh, what if I say this and they leave? Or it was so much mind drama around just speaking my truth and being okay if it didn't work out. I wasn't. Um, I, I don't know. I lacked. I think the confidence to just own who I was. And if I recognize any red flags that it was okay to walk away, to really stand my ground and set boundaries. I didn't realize I had a boundary problem until after my divorce. Um, so that was a few things. Yeah. I think having boundaries is, is definitely uh, a big thing. I, I know for me personally, I did not um, with former relationships. I was again, you know, the recovering perfectionist, the people pleaser, I found myself in really bad relationships. Um, they were just there for, uh, you know, just, I, I felt like I had to people please them as well. Mm-hmm. Like I was just picking the same men over and over and just patterns that weren't, um, in a way that was conducive to what I was looking for. But yeah, I didn't know what I was looking for. Cause I didn't even know who I was. I didn't know what value I brought. I always thought that their perceived value of me would define my worth. And so recognizing that later on, I mean, obviously you kind of have to go through a a series of so not so good relationships to find the one that, that you really love and cherish and admire because they bring out the best in you. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And so, you know, coming, coming from, you know, your divorce to getting married next year, can I share? Tell, I, I'm curious to know more about like the, I, and I think maybe our listeners are as well. Like maybe you're kind of in the middle. Like, what does change look like? What does it feel like? What are some of the obstacles? But yet, what are the rewards that are so worth the fight? Let's talk about that. Oh goodness, it was definitely a lot of change. Um, if we're going all the way back to my divorce, because I, you know, had such small kids. I lived with my mom, and then I was on my own, and now like to the next level, even blending a family because we both have kids. So there's just so much I could, we could talk for hours on that. Um, But I think first I really was proud of myself for being okay, living and being on my own. I really took a lot of time for myself and um, like almost having that discomfort of being alone. I think a lot of times people just jump into the next thing because it feels uncomfortable, but I allowed myself to feel that and know what I just like to do for fun or liked um, my alone time if my kids were with their dad and then to start dating and building this amazing relationship. But then also what was the next step? Blending a family with kids. And so a lot of growing pains, but just keeping that communication open to know where we were both at with blending a family. Um, But now obviously we live together. We're planning a wedding. So, yeah. Well, that's incredible. And so I I assume that, you know, a lot of your challenges that you had to overcome, you now uh, give back and help other women by being into the, you know, into the personal certified life coaching. And so you can kind of pull from your experiences and what are, I'm curious to know, what are some of the common themes or, or, or things that you just keep seeing over and over that you realize, wow, I experienced that. And I thought I was alone, but yet now here I'm, I'm, empowering other women to go after the life that they want. And you're starting to see the same patterns. Like what are some of the common things that you're picking up from your own experience to what you see when working with your clients? Self-doubt sometimes shows up. Um, Just questioning ourselves, like, you know, is this the right step I should be taking or um, the self-doubt with, um, we do, I do a lot of thought work. So a lot of times I'll have a client say, oh, no, I had a recent client. She was talking about how I see myself as this entrepreneur. And then her next sentence was, but can I make this happen? So I really do a lot of like dissecting those thoughts that show up. Cause I think it's the overthinking, the mind drama, 
is a lot of what holds us back. But when we can create the new beliefs of who we can truly step into, who we're meant to be, I think that's where I see a lot of the shifts with my clients because I think it's our thoughts that get in the way. Yeah, hundred percent agree. And I think it, you know, our our thoughts uh, they're shaped by those beliefs that that mm-hmm. we have held so strongly to that they become that truth. And so when we're believing that, that we we make sure that everything aligns with it from our thoughts to our words, to our behaviors and actions and how we're showing up. So it's almost like you have to follow the breadcrumbs back to where where they're they're not in alignment with what you want versus what you're believing today. So I, I presume that's probably, you know, somewhere along the same lines that you had to, had to go through as well. Oh yeah. Cause I had to dig back in and say, why, what are these stories? Where did they come from? And it's so crazy. Cause we don't even realize but so many of them stem back to like our childhood, Yes, you know, cause that was a big thing for me of why I was so afraid to share my voice because it went all the way back to school of, you know, not feeling smart enough. Yeah, no, I can definitely relate. And I think, you know, having those feelings and, and going back to our childhood, you know, they're, they're the beliefs that shape us, right? And so as they're carrying forward, that goes into our teenage years, to young adult, to adult, to it, it becomes a part of who we are and starts seeping into these different areas, into our relationships, to our employment, to our friendship, to now our children, to our, you know, friends and so on. And so when we start looking at life from an overview, we're going to say, well, how, are, you know, if this isn't the life I want, what needs to change? And it's not the other person and it's not the other situation. It's about taking, again, that accountability and personal responsibility to check yourself and say, am I reacting to certain things? Are these relationships the the goal of what I want? Do they come more easily and natural? And so when you when you feel like there's that tension, it's about getting clear on your identity. And so going back from identity to belief, you have to kind of trace that back. So I can relate, you know, is, is feeling like what you said about your voice, it, you didn't feel like you, you had that value and that, you know, concerned about that and, you know, thinking that you weren't smart enough. And so those become our limiting beliefs. So I, I challenge anyone listening to kind of say, oh, you know what, actually that resonated with me, or I find that I felt this way and that's because, and so only you can define that, you know, for you and your story. But I think even from my own personal, uh, growth journey here, it was connecting those dots because every time I got to a sticking point, I found that it was like an excuse. It was a lie. It was a story, right? So I, I kept connecting all these pieces. I'm thinking, oh my goodness, then what, what are these other things that I'm telling myself? And if I'm telling myself these things, then that's how I'm showing up. That's what I'm believing. That's the person I'm becoming. And it's like, but I don't want to, I don't want to continue on that path because it's not satisfying. It's not fulfilling. It doesn't feel like it's, it's an alignment with who I should be. Right. So it's kind of cool when you go through this, this through line more or less and seeing the connections, because now it starts giving you a better view and understanding of all the things, but also a way for you to look back and extend grace for your younger self, for those actions that you didn't know what you didn't know, but knowledge is power, right? So now that we can look back and say, oh my goodness, like this is why, and today is the day that I stop because that's not who I want to become. Yeah, absolutely. Rewrite the story. <laughs> right. And it's funny because my 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 tagline is create your own story. And so you oh, know, I love that. with that, it's you have the power to create your own story. And it when when I when I really shifted that because I, I was telling myself a bunch of BS, but I didn't know that because it was it's this culmination of 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 things, right? And they just started adding here's a page, here's a page, here's a page. And next thing you know, you got this the story that you're referring to, you're going back to, you're pulling antidotes from, you're pulling examples from. And that becomes like your um, you know, your your little black book of of BS and lies if if those are the ones that you're telling yourself. Yeah, so true. Yeah. Wow. This is a I love that you're sharing these things because it, it's so much that we can look back at and give back to our listeners and just be like, you know, this is the day that I I don't want to be this version of me. Or maybe you're content with the version you're at right now, but you don't you don't foresee that in the future version of you. And future version, I mean, it could change from future version tomorrow to future version of you in 10 years. 
So what was that version of you that you said, today's the day and this is the woman that I want to become. These are the areas of my life that I want to improve on. And this is how I need to show up for. So kind of share some of those, um, you know, the, the, the hardships that got you to where you're at in those areas, some of the sticking points, because I think all of us, I mean, if we're human, we're living similar lives in those paths with those different areas. Oh yeah. So it was definitely, um, just having those shifts. And like I said, recreating those beliefs and who I was, because now it's like, I want to draw that line in the sand. Like I want to step into the version of me that I'm meant to be. And that's in my relationship, in my business, putting myself out there and letting go of fear. Cause trust me, I still have those moments. So if your listeners are anything like me, I, I'll give you an example. The, it was funny when I promised myself, like when I, oh goodness, like a year and a half ago, I was like, okay, I'm going to keep showing up and doing the things that were scary. And I do a lot of like online coffee chats. Cause with my kids, sometimes it's, you know, just not easy for me to get out of the house. And so there's like, I don't know, 30 people on this Zoom call. And the girl says like, you know, she's gonna make everyone go around and say their name and talk about their business. The old version of me, this is how shy I used to be, no joke. I would have just left the meeting. <laughs> but I told myself, I'm like- I'm laughing because that was me too. <laughs> yes, I'm telling you. And that's why if you have a vision, you have this mission, your listeners, I'm telling you, listen right now, you have to show up and do those scary things. Yes. I stayed on. I felt it in my body. I felt the discomfort. I was nervous. I felt all the things, but I did it anyways. Mm -hmm. And you realize it wasn't as scary as like the, the over dramatic version of that would be right. Yeah. I literally would have gotten off. Cause I was like, Nope, can't do this. And I was like, no, you're going to stay on. You're going to do this and you're going to connect. And it was so cool because then I did, I got to connect with people on that call. And I was like, Basically, then it became like this, what's next kind of thing. Like, what else can I do that feels scary that I know the past version of me would have totally ran from? Yeah. Oh my goodness. I, I was exactly a person like not, not even just on Zooms, but I think it was prior to that because if I was on Zooms or meetings or anything, I mean, this is, I mean, well before Zoom, but I was a person who would just shrink in my chair and put a book over my face and just hopefully just, dis, you know, disappear and not make eye contact with a teacher or anything. And, and of course that would be their sign, be like, call on her. And I hated it because it gave me that unwanted, uh, uh, like negative attention. And I didn't know how to respond to those. And so it would always give me anxiety. And I could feel like my, my body just getting, you know, clammy hands to, uh -huh. to the pricker, prickly, tingly feeling your heart racing, you're all sweaty. And then it's like, they call on you and it's like, you're afraid your voice is going to crack and you're like, ah, you know, like freaking out. And so the, those were, those were like the, the little trauma things that were happening from like school on. And so they've always stuck with me. And so whenever something like that happened, um, for example, I think kind of my start of my journey was getting more into this online space and it was easier now, like now with zoom, you just turn your camera off, but you know, that's kind of taken the way out, but yeah, I would hit the end if it was like, okay, I'm out like networking. We got to <laughs> go talk. Okay. I got to go. And, and so now like realizing when, when that opportunity would come up, I would say, okay, I'm feeling the sensations. I'm feeling the warming. I'm feeling the clammy. What is the worst thing that could happen? And just ask yourself, what is the, what's the worst thing that could happen? You misspoke, you make a mistake. Well, if you're an active listener in those, those rooms or in a zoom or room or something like that, listen to everyone else. We all make mistakes. We all fumble for our words. We all, you know, misspeak. We, we make, you know, we're just not perfect. And so when we start recognizing that in other people, it almost takes the expectation and pressure off of ourselves because then you could just show up and just be okay with, you know, maybe a little stutter. Maybe you didn't have your words correctly. I mean, listen to this podcast. I mean, there's a lot of that. That's me. But it's learning to embrace those little imperfections and flaws that make you so unique that when the opportunity comes again, you realize, oh, I already did that. And it's not so scary. In fact, I witnessed, you know, the next person, she did that too. And she didn't have this. And so you realize that we're all just doing the best we can with what we know and what we have. So we're all, we're, we're humans, right? I mean, who loves to have this spotlight and attention on them when you're feeling like you're under a microscope, eventually you grow to that where you just become comfortable in who you are. 
And that's the journey. And so from your experience, it was recognizing that and just saying, I love that you said I did it. And it wasn't even that bad. And all of a sudden you're like, okay, the next time it comes around, you're still going to feel the, the, you know, the anxiety of it. But yet when we could shift our, our language, instead of saying that I am fearful, we become excited, right? Because our body holds the same it responses. So think of it when you're excited, you still get the same trembling, sweating hands and, and clammy, clammy hands, sweaty pits, all that stuff, right? But it's the same thrill factor. So when we could shift that narrative and look at it now as excitement, it becomes an opportunity for you to show up for your big, scary thing, conquer it and make a connection. And you do it again and you do it again. And how cool was that? Because what, what transpired from, from that experience? Definitely connections, um, collaborations. And I think another uh, thing that I gained from that was remembering to keep my why on the forefront all the time is knowing my why is to impact women. My why is to link arms with them so they feel supported. Um, So anything that kind of feels scary or it's like, okay, it's like a bigger audience, this might feel scary scary, but it's no, my mission is impact. So staying in that lane, like really helps me be like, okay, we're going to do the scary thing today. Yes. Oh, I'm so glad you brought that up. Staying, staying in touch with your, your why, your reason. And when we, when we focus on that, it takes the pressure and the expectation off of self. And when we focus on self, that becomes where like suffering, right? So we're, we're suffering in that, that state where we're just like, oh my gosh, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. I'm just, uh, and you just, you know, jump off a call or you shrink or you just get out of the situation, but yet you don't know what could be coming from that. If you just say yes and do the thing that scares you the most. And one of my favorite quotes is, uh, do the thing you fear the most and the death of fear is certain. And that's by Mark Twain. It was just when I, when I heard that quote, I was just like, I read it over and over and over again. And I realized like, okay, today's goal. And this is at the very start of my, my personal journey, because I wanted to try to challenge myself every single day. I said, I'm going to do something that was scary every single day. And it could have just been, you know, walking into the gym and not being freaked out by all the clanky weights and all the beefy people that were in there because I was just getting started. It was about just showing up and and walk, taking that first step in. And you're like, okay, it's scary. Oh my gosh, I feel out of place. Oh my gosh, just gym intimidation. And then it gets easier. And now you just walk into a gym and you don't even think about those things. So it's pretty cool when you challenge yourself because you're the only one who's going to know if it's a challenge. You're the only one who's going to know if you didn't make it. So it's, it's you against you. And that becomes the journey is that you're not competing with other people. You're competing with the version of you, who you were yesterday. And that becomes the competition. And I, I don't know, I, I like a little bit of self-competition. How about you? Absolutely. That was one of the things um, I told myself when I was like, okay, this is the time I'm going to get uncomfortable. And it, maybe if it wasn't things that are happening that are bigger now, like more business related, but it was, how can I get uncomfortable? And that's why I would say, try small things. Like you said, going into the gym, going and trying a different class, something you've never done. Like I'm not artsy, maybe go try an art class or, you know, go just sit at a coffee shop shop or get lunch by yourself. Like that was something that even felt uncomfortable to me. So before it was business related, I did it in my personal life to challenge myself to continue to kind of like feel what it feels like to feel uncomfortable. Mm, Yes. I love, I love that we, you know, the challenge aspect of it, it almost gives you like this little bit of a, like a high because you're like, Oh my gosh, what's next. I, if I could do that, I could do the next thing and the next Mm -hmm. thing. And so it's this trajectory that just builds that confidence. And I always say, you know, consistency compounded over time yields results. So if we're looking to, to better ourselves in different areas of our life. Again, how are you showing up for those? Are you challenging yourself to do a little bit more each day? And it's not about chasing this perfection because I mean, for those who haven't read my book, I'm sorry to spoil it, but it doesn't exist. So you're not going to find it at the end of my book, but it's about chasing the next thing, which is the next goal, the next step, the next idea, the next, you know, scary thing. And, and so when we're doing little by little, it, it, you know, you look back 
And so much has changed. You have become this different version all by staying focused on that why, on that mission and what your purpose is. And it's not about just trying to perfect it and worry about what other people are, are thinking or, or you know, have to say about it because you have one, one focus. It's do better each day. And, you know, witnessing that and seeing how your your life just started opening up opportunities to relationships, to possibilities. Right. So Mm -hmm. what what were some of the biggest things that for you were like, oh, my gosh, if if my former self, if I had stayed stuck and played small, this would not have happened. So what were some of the biggest things you're like, I'm so grateful for this new me, this elevated me? Oh my gosh. Everything I'm doing, if you would asked my younger self, like I wouldn't have believed it. I wouldn't believe I'd even be talking on this podcast. I mean, anything that had to do with speaking in high school, I would do anything to avoid it. So I think just this version of me in general, just owning who I am and being unapologetic about it. Like if, you know, if I'm not your person, that's okay. And just continuing to show up for those things that feel scary. Like you said, even if it's, you stumble on your words or it doesn't feel perfect. It's just keep trying, keep putting yourself out there, keep exploring, making sure that your values align with your daily actions. Like, so I'm just, I am, but I think that's the key too, is taking the time. If you're a high achiever, and you're a go-getter and you're on to that next goal, take a minute to really look back. Look at how far you've come. Because I know for me personally, like I said, I would have never in a million years thought I would be on podcasts, having my own podcast, going live on Instagram, any of that. So it's really acknowledging how far we've come. Because I think when we're a high achiever, you do, you get to that goal and then you're like, what's next? But it's like, let's celebrate all the wins along the way. Yes. Oh my gosh. I can totally relate to that because sometimes it's like you, you do forget that because as a high achiever, you're just on to the next one, on to the next one. And it's like, but you just busted your butt to work so hard, not only to become this version of you, but yet to accomplish those things that you needed to, to accomplish. And it's like, you forget the, the, the accomplishments personally and professionally that let's take a moment to celebrate. And um, yeah. you know, sometimes it's hard because you just, you get so focused too, but um, I'm glad that you brought that up because that was something that I personally have struggled with. And I still at times still struggle with that because it's like, you put all this effort in and the thing is created or it's launched or, it, you know, it becomes a success. And, and then you don't take a moment to really pause and just relish in that and, and celebrate it and, and think, wow, I'm so proud of my myself. I'm so proud of the work that I've done. And so, you know, taking those moments, if you're not clapping on your clapping your own back, then who's going to clap for you, right? So we have to have that that conscious, like little put a pin in it, go dance, celebrate. It could be like five minutes or it could be five days, whatever it looks like for you, but honor yourself. You deserve that and to give it back to you. And so, yeah, that's uh, that's definitely something of an area of my own personal growth that I'm, that I'm recognizing and and um, trying to be a little bit more uh, aware of, I guess. Do you <laughs> so. think as women, we're afraid to do that? Like, it's almost like an ego thing if we actually celebrate ourselves. Um, I I don't think that that would be the case for me. I don't know. I think uh, for me, I, it was uh, kind of the, well, that's what's expected. Like, that's the outcome mm-hmm. I was working on. So why would it not have been accomplished? And so it's almost that idea that was like, oh my gosh, you wrote a book. I'm like, well, what do you think I've been working on for like forever? Of course it's here. It's published. It's multi-award winning. Like, yeah. And, and it's almost like, I didn't even think to celebrate after I wrote my book. You didn't? No, never. even it, it, it was literally two weeks before I was set to publish. Somebody asked me, oh my gosh, you gotta be so proud. All this. I I've been following you. I've been watching it. You have been working at this for so long. What are you going to do to celebrate? I literally, when that question was was positioned to me. I was just like, I never even thought of that. Like it never even registered in my little filtration trap. It was just in one year and out the other. I was like, uh, I'm two weeks out and I didn't, I don't even have like a celebration plan. I have nothing planned. And that was the first, but it's not too late. It stopped me in my tracks. And that was the first time I really recognized that I'm doing this to myself. And from that, that point on, 
I've made it a point for bigger or even, you know, whether it's on a smaller scale for myself or a bigger scale of myself, I've paused to recognize and celebrate, even if it's just going out with your girlfriends, even if it's just clinking a glass of champagne, a really nice one or so with your husband on a, on a patio in the backyard when you're still in like your, your lounge clothes. I mean, it was just little things like that, but it was, Hey, I'm taking a moment to celebrate, just be with me because it means a lot and having those people around you. So that was something I definitely recognize. I'm still working on it because I feel like I'm always doing something. Yeah. How about you? What's, uh, what's your celebration for that? For when, you know, whatever it is that you accomplish. Um, I definitely think it's good to take time to celebrate, even if it's not something big. Um, I do have a good bottle of champagne though. I've been waiting. I, I told my friend, I'm like, we have to plan. Cause now my list of why I'm, you know, celebrating with this specific bottle is like growing. It's like five things have been added to the list, but whatever we get a chance to do it, I will, you know, mention all of them. Cause I do think it's so important to stop and celebrate. Cause that's also other things like that your listeners can hear about you. That's like, Oh, I achieved this. I'm giving it acknowledgement. I'm celebrating it. And that's exciting. And it gives them permission to do the same. Right. And sometimes we just forget to do that. And uh, it's just taking that pause to do that. So I'm glad that you brought that up because I probably would have missed it like I did for my book launch. <laughs> but, you know, it was, it was something that I learned. And, you know, we did have a party after. And of course, you know, I, I published it in the middle of a pandemic. So, um, you know, I think kind of that also slipped our mind because there were so many things that had to be pivoted. Uh, you know, how do we have a book launch and a party? when we can't even be more than six feet apart or less than six feet apart. So I think, you know, given the circumstances, you sh- we should always take into account, like, what is something that you have worked so hard for that you're proud of and just really take a moment to at least reflect because gratitude is such a profound, you know, deep and impactful feeling that resonates in all areas of our life. And so when, you know, we could look at it from a place of gratitude, but also a place of celebration, because you are worthy, you are worth it. And, you know, knowing that you have your loved ones around you to be supportive of it just encompasses and envelops you into, you know, like this big hug that says, wow, people are are there for me. They love me because I love me and I'm attracting the right people and they're there to support me and I support them. And it becomes this, this beautiful life when we can all collectively come together and do that. I love that. Yes. So I know that you talked about your podcast. So let's tell, tell us more about the podcast uh, and some more of your, the work with you do with the women is that kind of tie in together as well. Yeah, I started um, my podcast. It's almost three years. So very exciting. I started it with a friend. Um, I'm a life coach. She's a therapist. And we just always had these very like powerful conversations when we were together. And we were like, we just want to be able to support more women. So we started that. And it actually started the December right before. Obviously, we went into the pandemic. So we started that. And then we also showcase like women in business to share their stories and come together. Uh, so yeah, that's a little bit about that. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, very similar. And, uh, you know, the reason we started this podcast as well, and I, um, you know, have kind of just built everything that all encompasses, you know, empowering women to believe in themselves, to know their value and their worth. So I just love that what you're doing, because you're, you know, pulling from your story, your experiences, and now giving back to others to do the same. And, you know, we, we have very, very similar things in common here, which is really unique. So I just want to thank you for being on here and just, you know, uh, being a part of this, this community that we can all collectively come together and empower others. So tell us, tell our listeners how they can get in touch with you and learn more about you and finding your podcast or working with you or just jumping on those coffee chats. Cause that sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, absolutely. So the main place I like to play is on Instagram. So if you're listening, I would love for you just to get in my DMs, say hi. Uh, And then obviously I have the podcast and my coffee chats I do once a month. It is basically a space for uh, just female entrepreneurs to get on, get feedback, share their wins, share a place they're struggling, maybe even find someone else to collaborate with. Um, you know, go live, go on your podcast, whatever that looks like for you. Um, And then I am finishing out the year with a goal. It's goal. um, My goal getter offer. It's just a 90 minute call to kind of reflect on this year. And I am big on goal setting to help women just, you know, put their goals in place, 
go through those thoughts. Like we talked about any area that you might self-sabotage and just really get a plan of action in place and that extra accountability to be able to fulfill those. Ooh, I love it. So if you're not already following Lauren, please do. Everything will be included in the show notes. So please look below. There's going to be a lot of goodies in there. So I'm excited for people to come join you and learn more about you and listen to your podcast because you have so much to just really share. And I, and I just want to want to say that because I know how it, how it could feel like when we, we're we not sure like what the value is, but you have brought tremendous value to today's podcast. And, and I know our listeners are going to love it. I loved it. So I just want to thank you again. So thank you awesome. so much for having me. Absolutely. And we'll have to definitely stay in touch because this is something that um, obviously aligns with both of our mis- our missions and our goals and everything. So thank you so much for being our guest. Thank you. Hey there. Thank you so much for joining me on today's episode of the Confident Woman Podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode as much as I did, please be sure to like, subscribe, and leave us a review. Thanks again for listening.